Hello, everybody. My name is Jim, and this is my reading wrap-up for March 2023. The thumbnail of this video may look like padding, <laughs> but I was inspired by a video that Chatty did. Um, it was a brand new tag that she created. She posted it on her channel. I'm going to add a link to it in the cards up above. Um, and it was around children's books and picture books. And I wanted to reach back, go back into the memory banks and pull out one ch children's book that I remember distinctly. And I also read two more, but I'm going to go into those books towards the end. The four more adult books uh, that I read, I, I, I will review them very briefly first. I don't want this video to be super long. As of this recording, I only read one from cover to cover, but I am in the last 30 pages of another one of the books. So once this video is uploaded, I'm going to be finished with it. Um, I just wanted to be honest with myself <laughs> as I'm recording. But the first book on the list is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I went on vacation earlier this month to Orlando to visit some friends and just have a good time, and this was my airport read. Interestingly enough, the passenger buddy that I had on my first plane noticed that I was reading this book, and she and I started to have a conversation about Frederick Bachman. This is my first dip into Frederick Bachman, but I've heard great things. I know that Murphy Napier talks about a man called Ove, and uh, that was also recommended to me in MJ's chat from Reading This Life. So A Man Called Ove is on my radar, and my passenger buddy also recommended it. So I don't really have a TBR, but I think that that book is definitely going to be on my radar, <laughs> at least. And as I was coming home, there was a TSA officer walking around the airport, and um, the, the line was a little bit long going into security, and he just wanted to, you know, check on everybody and make sure we were all okay. He actually saw me holding this book, and he talked to me as well about a man called Ove. I keep mentioning it, and I haven't even said anything about anxious people, but it was a great read. I, I really enjoyed the writing. The premise of the story was around a hostage situation that took place during an apartment showing, and the way that Bachman writes characters is something that I very much enjoyed about this book. I think he did a great job. All of them had a little tinge of sass to them because he was really shooting for the humor here, but there were so many serious topics that were covered in this novel that were handled so delicately and so well. There were a lot of references to mental health and how people react to certain situations. And obviously, when there is a hostage situation, the tension is ramped up, emotions are high. It was it was just all in all a great read. There was a back and forth between the police officers conducting interviews with the hostages and other witnesses, as well as a deep dive into some of the hostages themselves, how they felt at the time all of the struggles that they were dealing with and it was just a great look into human emotion and empathy and I, I thoroughly enjoyed all of the characters that he created for this novel. It was a great read. I recommend it to anyone. I'm planning to give this a proper review very soon so look forward to that. I might even use the system that I introduced in a recent video of mine. So if I do that, just be warned that there will be spoilers. This is a book that is not one that you want me to spoil. So if you haven't read it yet, I would recommend not watching that video when the time comes. I know it's probably counterproductive to me, but you know, it's, it is what it is. I would, I would much rather you guys borrow books from the library and read them yourselves first, then have everything ruined for you by watching one of my videos. So look forward to that if you have read this book, but otherwise definitely go out and read it first. The next book I'm going to talk about is Willowborn by Shanna Miles. This unfortunately is a DNF for me. I haven't gotten halfway through. 
as a rule, as a general rule, when I reach that halfway point, that's when I tell myself that it's okay to review the book. And I don't really want to do that for one that I absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt is going to be either a one or two star. And it's really disappointing because Shanna Miles at least at one point lived in South Carolina. So I considered her a South Carolina writer. I was inspired to purchase this book and read it from an article that I read in a local newspaper before I moved into my new house. And I was curious. It it was a it was marketed as a fantasy book. I enjoyed the blurb. Basically the premise is that we are following a witch who died fifty years ago and she was resurrected in this more modern age. So she's having to fit in and has also proposed to a group of people to help her figure out who killed her 50 years prior to the events that are taking place. Very cool. Um, On top of that, she's an empath. So the main character in this story is able to read auras. So I guess from that perspective, she is an empath. But I haven't really felt any sort of connection with the other people outside of being able to read their auras. So just by calling her an empath, it's not really registering to me. But on top of that, it seems like a first draft. I don't think that enough people edited it. I don't think that enough people read through it because there are many misspellings. There are grammatical errors. There is some problematic language, particularly a transphobic comment. There is a highly offensive ableist term. And there is a Hispanic character who introduced himself in Spanish and never spoke Spanish again, or at least as far as I've gotten. And it is a huge pet peeve of mine when someone's ethnicity is pushed through their dialogue, especially if that comes across as the only purpose to say a certain word or use a particular language. Like you really want to, you know, drill it in. So that was pretty problematic. And just as something that was a really rough pattern and why I thought that this was a first draft and really needed to be checked on is Jean Benet Ramsey has been mentioned a few times in this book already and her first name has been misspelled every single time. So I believe that if she was able to get an editor, then that editor would have been able to pick that up early and fix that problem. I don't know if she did or she didn't, but right now it just really looks like she didn't. And all of these errors and problematic language was within the first 30 pages. I read 20 pages more. I went kind of into the 50s and the 60s, and I had to stop there because it just wasn't getting any better. So unfortunately for Willowborn, for me right now, it's a DNF. And if I continue it, I just do not see it being more than a one or two star read for me. But if any of you want to check it out and give it a try, then as with all of the books that are mentioned today, the link to the Goodreads page is in the description. The Cotton Candy Massacre by Christopher Robertson was 100% a mood read. <laughs> I I was about to say that the book was trash. I was about to say I needed trash, but no, I am trash. It's me. I am the garbage. It's me. I needed to read this book. I am 30 pages to the end, so when this video is uploaded on Saturday, I will have read it already. The premise of the story is that a clown who wreaked havoc at an amusement park died gruesomely. And now, in his own little clowny way, he is haunting the amusement park now that it's back up. I don't really want to go into too much detail about how he died and the whole situation about the amusement park now that it's back up. Because, unfortunately, one of the downsides to this book is that it takes about halfway through (laughs) the novel to actually get to the good stuff. You have the death very early on, so that's not a spoiler at all. But almost the entire first half of the book is built up to when everything hits the fan and goes crazy. Now that I'm almost finished, I can tell you that my mood for the book is wearing off. I'm not not enjoying it still, but 
this was definitely a mood read. This isn't something that I'm just going to pick up and read out of the blue just for something that I want because it is very specific. It is a slasher. It has a lot of swearing. It has a lot of nudity, a lot of gore. There are tons of 80s references and cliches. And it feels like I'm knocking the book, but I am going to give this a, a, a great review and a great rating because it is exactly what I need right now. I need something not serious. I need something that's camp and crazy. And Christopher Robertson really delivered that. If you love gore fest novels, you might like this actually. His writing isn't bad. I I enjoy his his prose. I think that he uses certain words um a few times too many like the word smirk. But I think that his prose, he likes to use alliteration every now and then, which I think is always cool because that's how I write too. <laughs> um, and his style is is really unique. It actually reads like an 80s movie. You have scene cuts. You have split screens. You have sentences said by one character that bleed into the sentence of another character. So it's just very cool. The transitions are unique and different and it helps me see visually just how cinematic this book could be if it were turned into a movie definitely fits the typical slasher vibe but i will say that it is a pretty interesting twist on a certain genre and i can't say anything more than that because it would be a spoiler on the latter half of the book so i'm gonna leave it at that the last quote adult this is more of a young adult book but we are all so good at smiling by amber mcbride i'm not that far in it yet i'm only 30 ish pages in but first of all this was a cover by i read the blurb too and that also drew me in but this cover is absolutely gorgeous i also read a little bit of a sample of this book on amazon so that I could just get a feel of how it's written and it's written in verse. So if you aren't, you know, too keen on poetry and and verse, then this might be a difficult book for you to to read. Personally, I am I'm really enjoying the style. I'm enjoying the subject matter. It is about depression and kind of being torn between two worlds. It brings that fantasy world into a place that's so sterile and honestly a little bit scary uh i am certainly not a fan of hospitals even visiting hospitals creeps me out and just makes me very uncomfortable so i can't even imagine having to be a patient in a hospital and having to deal with the bright lights and the people constantly watching you and i think mcbride does a really good job of laying out her character whimsy's routine and giving you a sense of what goes on in Whimsy's outside world as well as her inner world. I'm really looking forward to wrapping this story up and reading through it for the month of April. So that's really all I can say about We Are All So Good at Smiling because I'm not that far in, but I did want to mention it as a book that I will be reading for April. So you will probably get a more complete review of it during the wrap up next month. Whew. Okay, so we are finished with those, and now we are going to move on to the children's books slash picture books, whatever you want to call them. I don't know, easy readers, whatever. I'm not used to this genre. I haven't read these sorts of books in a very long time. Whatever they're supposed to be called, you can correct me in the comments. It's totally fine. But yeah, this was inspired by Chatty's video, and I'm going to re respond to her tag in a future video as well so look forward to that that's not going to be as spoilery i guess as the anxious people review so anybody is free to watch that one without feeling some type of way or but without rambling too too much more <laughs> i said i wanted this to be a short video it's not chrysanthemum is a book by kevin hankies that my teachers way back when i was a child would read in my classes I'm pretty sure I heard this story a number of times. And the reason why I wanted to pick it up was because when I was working in the school system, I had two students on two separate occasions come up to me and tell me 
I hate the name that my parents gave me. I hate my name. Paraphrasing, but that was the general feeling from these two students. And I felt so bad because your name is such a huge part of your identity, especially as someone who's growing up. I know that you can change your name when you get older, but first of all, that is more of a complicated process than you might think. (laughs) And Second of all, you can't really do that as a child. And I I know that there are kids out there who get made fun of for their names. And so I went back in time and I opened Chrysanthemum again because I know that that is the main premise of the story. It's about a little girl mouse who is born. She is given the name Chrysanthemum. For so many years, she loves her name. She loves how unique it is. She loves how it rolls off of her tongue. But as soon as she starts school, she is bullied because of her name. And, I mean, kids really can be awful. (laughs) I'm not going to sit here and be one of those people who says that all children are angels and they are sweet. They will pick out any difference about you and make fun of it if they can. That is where good parenting and good teachers come into play (laughs) so they can squash it, which is unfortunately not the case for poor Chrysanthemum. The teacher really didn't put her foot down when Chrysanthemum was being bullied. And this part of the story, of course, is not something that I remember about the book as a kid. I remember the premise. I remember the character. I remember the name. But I didn't remember how dismissive the teacher was, and that is kind of a bad lesson to teach kids. (laughs) If a child is being bullied, it is the teacher's job as the overseer of the classroom to step in and say that's enough. I know that a lot of times kids get away with things in, in private that teachers maybe aren't privy to but in this situation one of the bullies was very vocal and the teacher specifically told that bully just to sit down she didn't say why she didn't explain that it was rude to bully it was really kind of teaching a bad lesson for kids it was telling kids that their worth is determined by other people and how they perceive them and that they're kind of on their own and that the teacher's not going to do anything about it. So it would be really nice if this story was modernized (laughs) and rewritten so that someone's self-worth wasn't so dependent on other people. So all in all, I guess it was a little bit disappointing (laughs) to read this, to remember it so fondly and then read it again. And it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, all that great. It was cute. I didn't rate it super low. I think I rated it a three star. P is for Pterodactyl by Raj Haldar and Chris Carpenter was a book that I read towards the end of the month. I thought the concept of this was pretty hilarious (laughs) just based on how crazy the English language is and how a lot of it doesn't make sense most of the time. I thought it was a cute book. I mean, there really isn't that much to say, but it's an alphabet book. It goes over different situations where the letter doesn't really sound like the letter that you're taught in preschool and kindergarten. I did read a few reviews where they said that the joke of the book went over much better with an older group of kids. They thought it was funny because I don't think you really realize until you get older just how wacky the English language is. So this is probably a book for older kids, even though it's an alphabet picture book. Each of the pages also features, you know, like a little sentence or or two to go along with the illustrations that don't really sound the way that they look. (laughs) So it's just, it's just cute. It was a cute idea. I enjoyed it. I, I think I gave it five stars. I'm not sure, but it's a cute little book, um, probably better for like a middle schooler, maybe fourth, fifth grade, something like that. But it was a fun read because I talk about how crazy the English language is all the time as someone who writes and edits for a living. So, <laughs> so the fact that it didn't make sense made sense to me. And the last book I'm going to talk about is actually one that I read early on in the month. It was the next book that I read after Anxious People. It's called I Go Quiet by David We Met. This is a book that I wish I had when I was younger. I read through it and it's it's weird because when I read through these picture books, I don't really know whether or not to place them 
at the easy reader stage, like kindergarten to second grade, something like that, or if I should place them older. This read like an easy reader. It was very repetitive. It was super easy to read, like one sentence per page, I believe, almost. The images that were used, if this were turned into a movie somehow, it would be a Tim Burton movie. <laughs> um, but also the theme of it is about introversion and being unable to speak up and eventually finding your voice through other means. Definitely a book that I wish I had. I just don't know exactly when I would read it. So this is kind of a marketing thing. I don't know how exactly this book would market. Personally, I believe I gave this five stars just because I enjoyed it as an adult today, thinking back on how I was so quiet back when I was growing up and how I really would have preferred to sit in the corner and not interact with anybody. This is certainly a book that I think teachers could benefit from as well, just so they can understand that not all children are the same. They feel differently. They learn differently. They might not be as chatty, but there could be so much imagination going on in their brain and it would be a good lesson for teachers to explore that and help children come out of their shells a little bit more. So I don't know. I just don't know where to market this book, but I personally enjoyed it. As far as the art is concerned, I always kind of like that Tim Burton sort of art. I love The Nightmare Before Christmas. I love James and the Giant Peach, <laughs> you know? So mm, I... I don't know. I thought it was a, a really interesting book. And I think that it's one that certainly sparked a little bit of discussion, at least in my brain. <laughs> so, yeah, if you if you guys are interested in reading any seven of these books that I cracked open this month, the links to their Goodreads pages are in the description below. Click on that. Find the retailer of your choice and purchase the books from there. Or if they are available in your local library, be sure to research that yourself. Borrow one of these books if you are able to find them. Otherwise, I've been Jim. You've been great. Don't fool too many people today. I know it's April 1st, but, you know, you, some, sometimes you just got to be nice. Don't give in to the hype.